Hello and welcome back to Comic Vantage and today is New Comic Book Day and the day of the week is August 8th, 2018. So these are the new pickups for today. Uh, today is the video where I go to my LCS, pick up my books, bring them on home, give them a good read, tell you all about them. So there can and will be spoilers. If you don't want spoilers, back out now, come back later. Let's get started. First up this week was a book that surprised the hell out of me. I had no idea this was coming out and I just... I was randomly told it was there. Dino Saucers, number one. I had to have this book. Uh, if you haven't heard of Dino Saucers, it's a cartoon that came out of the 80s. It was 1987. The creator, actually, right here, they show you. Look at that. September 14th, 1987, the Dino Saucers air on TV. And the creator of the, of the cartoon brought it over to Lion Forge, who is now putting out the Voltron comics, and had them release it as a comic book. And this is a complete retelling of the original series. So we start off with the Voyager probe going through space and it is being found by this awesome dinosaur spaceship. Now the whole storyline is, is there is a planet that is on the opposite side of the sun from us. And it's always on the opposite side and it's called Reptilon and that's why we do not know it's there and it is home to a race of dinosaurs. Uh, and we have our little heroes, they call themselves the Secret Scouts. The rept or the, the dinosaurs who live on this planet have completely decimated their home world. And they need a new source of resources. Here's Rex, the evil leader. And that is our planet. So they decide to mount a full-scale invasion. There is a resistance going on on their own planet. And eventually they come to Earth and they team up with who we know are now the Secret Scouts. And hilarity ensues. Well, not really hilarity, but you know, great adventures far and wide across the planet. Now, I wasn't expecting much from this book because of after my last review I did of the Voltron Legendary Defender issue number one from Lion Forge. It was eh. So I wasn't expecting much from this book, and I gotta say, it fell right into the same category. The dialogue was good, the artwork was great, but it's trying to be a cartoon. So you have a lot of like hanging things, and it just goes to the next panel. Oh, this happened. And, you know, it was just, it just leaves a lot unexplained and you're just like, okay, what's going on? So, you know, I bought it for nostalgia reasons and that's it. If you want a good read, I'd say pass on this. If you want it for nostalgia, it's fun to have. Next, we have Death or Glory number four from Image Comics. This has been a great read so far from start to finish. Uh, it's a lot of fun, action packed. When last we left our heroes, Glory was at the mercy of this weird nun maid thing. Her and her companion Pablo have made to Korea Joe's <clears throat> to steal his money and to save his, or She wants to steal his money. Pablo wants to save his family. Again, this book is just a lot of fun. You have a lot of action. Great storytelling, great writing. The artwork is amazing. And then you get cool car chases. <laughs> really, there's just so much going on in this book. It has so much going for it. It is such a wild read and a wild ride. As Pablo's actually under the vehicle while they're trying to escape. This, is, this should be on everyone's pull list. It's so much fun to read. I can honestly see this becoming some type of movie or TV show, and probably a movie the way it's going. Because, wow, it seems like it's just made for it. So anyway, I'd say pick it up. Next on our list, Scooby Apocalypse number 28. I know some of you are like, why are you reading Scooby? I picked this book up, I don't know, two issues ago just because of the cover. Love the cover, read it. Ended up loving the story. I'm going to pick up the back issues and trade and just keep going from here on out. And man, this cover is just gorgeous too. <clears throat> we got good old Daphne here. Got blood splattered on her face and on her hands. 
We got Scooby back there looking pretty mean. Great, great story so far. Oh, I didn't even notice this. There's like claws and coming with blood dripping off of them. Right now we have our Daphne where she is out on a hunt. She's really gone kind of Daryl, just lone wolf on her own out hunting uh, because Fred died a couple issues ago. And that really just sort of threw her for a loop and put her in a very, very dark place. And now she just goes out and hunts on her own. I love this panel here where she's just sitting upon, upon a pile of dead bodies just patching up her arm. It's so cool. I love the artwork in this. And the storyline has been really good. And it has a very human aspect to it too because now we're back at the mall where all this, a bunch of survivors are holed up. And Velma is leading them. And her and Shaggy are together, by the way. Um, but like I said, it's very real and very human because she's feeling the pressures of running this place. And all she wants to do is scream, but she knows she can't do that. It's really a lot of fun. And then, Scrappy-Doo. Seriously, Scrappy. He's a, just a mutated hound who was genetically engineered to be a killing machine. So he wants to join her out on his hunts, or her hunts. A much, much, much darker Scooby than everyone is used to. Just look at those panels. Such a great read. I know everybody was thinking, what, Scooby? Seriously, so good. So, so, so very good. And there's a huge, huge panel or page at the end here. I don't want to spoil it for anyone in case you decide to read it yourself. And I would recommend picking this up. Honestly, just pick up an issue, give it a try. I think you'll fall in love. Next, from Boom Studios, we have Black Badge. I had no idea what this was about. I just grabbed it, picked it up. I wanted to read it. You know, it's Boom. Boom's been putting out a lot of really good stuff. And it starts off... We got some kids going to South Korea on a field trip. And apparently they are Boy Scouts. It's like, okay, Boy Scouts, what we got going on here? Then they break away from the group, grab a canoe and start paddling. And before you know it, they have crossed into enemy territory and they are now in North Korea. Apparently, the black badge is not a thing that they wear. They're a group of kids that have been recruited by the U.S. government, specifically Boy Scouts, to go and do missions that adults can't do. This one in particular, they were tasked to go into North Korea and find a target and mark it and call in an airstrike. <laughs> Because they figured when the, if these kids are found, you know, no one's going to hurt a bunch of kids. They're just a bunch of lost kids who just got lost in the woods, you know, ooh, hey, and send them home. Which, coincidentally, is really what happens. They get found at the border, and they're like, hey, it's just a bunch of 15-year-olds, so they send them through on their way and send them home. I could not believe that. I was like, are you kidding me? This is such a crazy story. I want to find out... I really, and then they give you this little snippet where the black badge was founded in 1910. It's like, God, how long has this been around? It's so cool. I love this idea. Really, really unique. Uh, apparently, there is some conflict going on. There's a new kid in the group. His name is Willie. Uh, they go through and they actually introduce all the characters at the end and tell you their specialty. And he's the new member of the group. They lost their fourth previously. And they do say that some kids can and will die on these missions. So it's really interesting to see how far this goes. And I'm really curious and I want to read more of it. A lot of fun. And next up from DC Comics, Red Hood and the Outlaws, number 25. I got this really cool semi-virgin cover. It's so amazing. Look at that. Just Batman and Red Hood going at it. You see Robin's old costume, Jason Todd's old costume down there at the bottom. This issue, again, God, Scott Lobdell, there's one thing you can guarantee from him is he's, gonna, he's just going to rip out your heart while you're reading this comics. <laughs> so we start off with Jason Todd Robin just floating in the water. And you have this whole sequence here of him saving Batman and dragging him out.
and Batman telling him that if you ever leave, it'll be by your choice, not mine. And it's like, oh, here we go. <laughs> and then we get to the good stuff. We have the outlaws hidden base up in the sky crashing down because the AI that is controlling it says that uh, Bizarro is no longer uh, smart enough to run the technology and it's too dangerous. So he needs to self-destruct and destroy it. Of course, Artemis and Bizarro are on the base, the headquarters. So they're trying to figure out a way to stop it because it's going to kill a ton of people once it crashes. And Jason Todd is trying to figure out how to get up to them. And then, whammo, Batman happens. Isn't that always the way? Just wham, Batman. <laughs> and we know Batman's coming after him because from the last issue, Jason Todd shot the penguin point blank in the face. And Bruce Wayne told him, no more killing and you can stay in Gotham. So that happened. And now we have this huge knockout, drag out, knockdown, drag out fight between these two. And man. Batman is just really, really just pounding on him. And it's so funny because, you know, in the, you have these scenes right here, and then in the background you have this ghost shadow of them two just hanging out together. Batman is just relentless. Seriously, no mercy. But, you know, this is where I actually need your guys' help here. I gotta know if I'm missing a page. Because I got this, right? Batman says, no more Red Hood. He is in mid-punch. Very next page. Bizarro is standing there saying, no more talking. Batman makes Bizarro's head hurt. And there's a hole. Like, Bizarro punched him through the ground? I am, am, and Batman just nowhere to be seen from here on out. Okay, and it's like, did, am I missing a page? Did I get an error issue where it's just missing? Because really, it just goes from that to that. I have an ad in between. Was it forgotten? Did the printer screw up, DC? <laughs> Let's find out. Somebody out there help me. Anyway. And then Bizarro reunites all of them. And they start talking about how to fix this and how they went on the, this date and uh, how Artemis was so wanting to use the quantum doorway and it gave Bizarro an idea. He grabs this giant hose pipe thing and dives through the quantum doorway. And it starts sucking in the entire base. And they're like, we have to go in after him. And Artemis is like, no, I'll go in after him. You stay here. And they both disappear. Gone. And then he's left with Batman. And I thought that was pretty poignant too. Batman destroys his helmet, rips off his logo. He has a whole new costume coming up that they preview too. But then, hey, he gets saved by Arsenal. That's his next issue, is Red Hood and Arsenal ride again. So that should be kind of interesting. Here, let me give you a sneak peek. There's Red Hood's new costume coming up. Pretty cool if you ask me, I like it. Anyway, absolutely great read. Everyone should have this on their poll. If you don't, pick up trades. I mean, every single issue, there hasn't been a dud yet. It's been absolutely amazing. Next, Sword Daughter, number three. This was really good. I really enjoyed this one, and I, I opted for this gorgeous painted cover. Oh, man, isn't that just a thing of beauty? 
So the whole story is Elsbeth and her dad are the survivors of a massacre that occurred 10 years ago that killed off his wife and everybody else. And they are hunting down this group called the 40 Swords. And they found them. And Elsbeth goes and sets up a little meet and greet with the 40 Swords. Now intertwined with this whole storyline, we have this segment of an older woman who is a pagan and she seems to be or at least partially raised or living with nuns in a convent and they just harass her and annoy her and she's just had enough of them and then we come back to Elsbeth and her dad and they go and they meet up with the leader of the 40 swords And they have a duel to the death where Elsbeth's dad finally gets to enact his revenge. And like I said, also through this entire storyline, we have this older girl or woman who's enacting her own revenge against this religious order. and possibly people that took her captive. By the end of the book, we come to realize that this older girl is Elsbeth. And it's just like, what is going on here? And then we find out that the last three issues were kind of like a precursor or a prequel to the actual story that's supposed to be coming. And Elsbeth is separated from her father and she's going to find him. And it says here, I have not forgotten him. This is who I am and how I came to be. And it just kind of blows my mind that this is just her little backstory, that the first three issues were her back. I don't know how long this is going to run, but wow, I'm hooked. I'm really hooked now from here on out. As if I wasn't before, I've been loving this story. But now we have an older Elsbeth, and she actually talks. So, and she seems to be a really, really seriously badass swordswoman. So, I cannot wait to see what happens now. Her father's missing, she's going to find him, and this is gonna be cool. And next up, from IDW, we have Transformers Unicron number three. This is the end coming. The end times are here. Unicron is coming. It's already destroyed a ton of the colonies of Cybertron. Refugees, Decepticons, Autobots, all on Cybertron trying to figure out how to stop this massive beast. And every time it eats a planet, there's Unicron. He just becomes more and more powerful. Starscream thought he had a brilliant idea. He sends out the Decepticon Armada, which is this here. Up here is the Autobot fleet, both going to intercept Unicron, trying to take it out. And while he sends them out, he's like, yeah, we gotta run. <laughs> love Starscream. And I love that he calls Optimus Prime OP. <laughs> Starscream is such an awesome character. Ah, oh, yeah, this is such a great, great, great story. I'm having so much fun with this. And it, it's going back also in time where Bumblebee shows up. He's received a vision from Omega Supreme on how Unicron was created. And he's coming to tell the story how millions of years have passed when the Cybertronians were first venturing out and colonizing space. This gentleman here is Shockwave, who back then was going by the name Onyx Prime was leading the Autobots and the Decepticons and all the Cybertronians out on these uh, colony missions because there's been too many wars going on on the planet and he felt that if they put their aggression outward, they would stop the, war, the wars on their own planet. So they're going and they're conquering. One of these planets they end up on is called Antilla. And Antilla turns their planet into Unicron as a doomsday device to just completely eradicate Cybertron. It's pretty much their greatest revenge. <clears throat> I am 
loving this story. I have no idea how anything is going to end. The artwork is just absolutely beautiful. Alex Millen is just kicking ass on this thing. And I'm happy to read that, happy to see that uh, he's not torturing an inker with his super detailed work. Oh my God. Because wow, there's a lot of detail and just a lot of amazing little things put in here. So much fun. If you're, if you're an Autobot fan or a Transformers fan in general, this is such a great read. Seeing all these old characters, new characters, just different generations crossing over. <clears throat> it's just, it's a blast. I'm having so much fun with this. You know, and by the time we get to the end of the story, Unicron is upon them. They have no idea what to do. Either they flee and leave most of the inhabitants behind or stay and everyone dies. Just look at this last panel. This is the last page right here. It's Unicron with his hands over Cybertron. Absolutely stunning. Look at that. It's just beautiful. I would hang that on my wall. <laughs> that is just an amazing piece of work right there. Great read. If you're a Transformers fan, you cannot pass this up. Absolutely amazing. And next up for Marvel Comics, we have Darth Vader number 19. Anyone who's been following my channel knows I absolutely love this series. Oh, this is such an amazing, amazing series. We have Vader still going out into the universe in the solar system and hunting down the last of the Jedi Order. So we start here with him barging in on this unsuspecting Zabrak and his wife who just had a child. And apparently this is Koth, who was once a Jedi who has left the Order, and now he's a priest. And of course, you know, he's not going to let Vader take his kid. He is going to fight. Absolutely beautiful fight scenes in this book. And again, the storyline is great. It's so much fun. We get to meet a lot of the, a lot of the Inquisitors who show up all over the place. He sends the Inquisitors to track down this gentleman's wife and child while Koth fights him. And actually, a lot of the fight scenes were really, they were drawn very elegant. I mean, like, look at this. That's just beautiful. Unbelievably well written, like usual. Like I said, Charles Soule is just amazing. I love that man's writing. Almost everything he writes is just beautiful, spot on. Dialogue is always great. Here is Vader returning with the child. And this, God, I love that. This is Vader when he meditates. This is how he sees himself in his meditation chamber. Whoever came up with that visual is just, it's beautiful, it's a, he's a genius. You see the blue is his cybernetic part, the red is just his rage. Absolutely great read. If it's not on your poll, you should really be reading this. I don't care if you're a Star Wars fan or not. It is just a lot of fun to read. And my last book this week, The Sandman Universe. And this is Neil Gaiman catching us up on what's been happening in the Sandman world and bringing us up to date. So we start off with The Dreaming. Aha, uh -huh, we've returned home. And we start meeting some familiar faces like Lucian and Merv Pumpkinhead. I mean, look at this, this is absolutely amazing. And we do have four books coming out uh, in the Sandman universe to take place in the next month or so. And uh, this is the jumping off point for them. This starts it all off. So first, they find out that the Dreaming, there's this giant shatter happening and it's starting to crack open. So Lucian sends, he tries to call Daniel, who is Dream, the new, you know, the new Dream after Morpheus had died, he transitioned over. And Daniel's not answering. <clears throat> 
so he sends a raven out to find him. Because the ravens just know these things and they know how to find people. And as the raven is out adventuring and going through people's dreams and through their waking hours, he is laying out the storyline or the beginning intros for the next four books. Of course, we have, you know, we have Mervyn here, and uh, he is going to be in the new book that is called, actually, it's called The Dreaming. And in the next story here, we meet Timothy Hunter. Timothy Hunter seems to be has some kind of innate magic abilities. Apparently he might be a wizard. We're not sure yet because we don't know. And his book is going to be called The Books of Magic. Where I believe, like I said, he's going to be some kind of wizard studying magic. And then we come to the next story here where it brings us to New Orleans. And we meet Urzuli, who is a goddess. And her book leads into the House of Whispers. And we have this other little family here that I think might tie in because she says that they are her people. So I think this is going to have a lot of magic and voodoo and things like that. And in the next story we come to, of course, is Lucifer. And the Lucifer story brings us to the Lucifer book that is coming out. And I believe there is one last story in here. Oh, no, actually, that was it. Those are the four books coming out. We have The Dreaming. We have Books of Magic. We have The House of Whispers. Oh, I'm missing a book. I don't know which one it is, though. All right, so anyway... But then when we come to the end, we have Daniel just hanging out in the city here. And the raven returns and says he could not find him because he did not want to be found. And Lucian has the sneaking suspicion that Dream quit. He no longer wants to be a part of the Endless. Oh, those are the four books. Yeah, Dreaming, House of Whispers, Lucifer, and Books of Magic all take place in the Sandman universe coming up. Really excited for them. I've always loved the Sandman books. They've always been great stories. With Neil Gaiman actually curating each one, you know they are going to be good. All right, so there's my books for the week. Let's do a quick recap, shall we? We have Sandman Universe. If you've never read the Sandman books, this is a great way to start off. Pick it up. It's a lot of fun. Darth Vader, 19. Star Wars fan or not, this is just a plain good read. Transformers Unicron. If you are a Transformers fan, you cannot miss this book. This is the end, folks. The Transformers series is coming to a close in IDW, or at least these books are. So I can't wait to see what's after that, though. Sword Daughter, number three. Again, this is getting bloody. And man, just to find out that Elsbeth has now grown up and she's in search of her father and she's a badass. Oh. Red Hood and the Outlaws, number 25. This book is just packed with a heartbreak. It is an awesome read. Everyone should pick it up. Black Badge, Covert Op Boy Scouts. I mean, what more should I say? It's a fun read. Scooby Apocalypse number 28. Again, if you're not a Scooby fan, I don't care. Pick up one issue. Just one. Just, just, just one and read it. I, I think you'll fall in love. Death or Glory number four. Again, action-packed book. Great storyline. I cannot wait to see what happens. And Dino Saucers number one. Pick it up for nostalgia's sakes only. Don't buy it for any other reason because it's... I think you'll actually be a little disappointed, but still. The nostalgia is fun. Anyway, people, those are my books for the week. These are my opinion. Your mileage may vary. And uh, like always, thank you for watching. To all my subscribers, you guys are awesome. Make sure you keep watching, liking, sharing, commenting. I love hearing all your comments. You guys are great. If you're new to the channel, hit the little CB over there. Hit that bell up there. That subscribes you and gets you my notifications. Like always, thank you for watching and take it easy.